while I was preparing this sermon, the Lord spoke to me and said, I must tell the people that the Lord has a calling on everyone's life this morning. doesn't matter who you are or what you do. God has called you to do something specific for Him. And the awesome thing about it, God will give you what you need to do that that He asks you to do. He will give you all the abilities, all the words. If you must go and pray for seekers and lay your hands on them, He will give you the words what to pray for for them to be healed. That's our God. He's a good God. In Afrikaans, we sang a song about Ek wil gereed wees as Jesus kom. In English, I want to be ready when God comes. You know how big that words are? Are we really, really ready when God comes? On Friday, I had a phone call and it was the the doctors. They said to me, I got I must go and see the specialist for tumor cancer. So just there, I fell on my knees. I said, Lord, what must I do now? Look at this negative meshes I've got. I'm not going to take it. Then they made an appointment by the doctor for half past three in the afternoon. But between 12 and half past two, I, was, I had a lot of questions asking, Lord, is this this? Am I finished with my road? Are you going to come and get me? Am I going home where you want me to be? Am I finished with the work on earth? So Patrice, my wife, said, no, it's negative. We're not going to take it. But we had a lot of questions. And the Lord is good because when we came to the doctor, he said, no, it's only for the insurance purposes that they want the doctor to say there's no cancer. That's all what it is. So praise the Lord, I'm healed through His name. But in that time or that space where I received the phone call, I had a little bit of a fright. Even though I'm more than a winner through God that gives me the power, I still had a fright because I don't want to leave everything behind. So Isaiah 41 verse 10 told me, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you, says the Lord. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So we mustn't be afraid. If God has called you to do something, go and do it because he will give you what you need to do that, what he trusted you to do. So that's why I want to sp- uh, read us out of Matthew um, 25, 14 till 30. That's speaking about our talents. So I want to read for us here. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling for a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to the one he gave five talents, to the other he gave two, and to the other he gave one. To each according to their own abilities. And immediately they went, he went on his journey. Uh, verse 18. But he who have received one went. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 16. Then he who have received the five talents went and traded with them and made five more. And likewise, he who have received the two talents gained two more. But the one who have received the one went and dug in the ground and he hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received the five talents came and brought five more talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me with five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His, his, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are been faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, I have del- uh, delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. 
Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were a beer hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not shattered seed. And I was afraid. I went and hid your talents in the ground. Look, there is, and uh, there, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gathered where I haven't sat sh shattered seed. So you ought to be have disposed my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has more will be given, and he who have abundance will from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him, and cause the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, there will be a reaping and gathering of teeth. So this morning, I want to say thank you to the Lord for the word of God that we've got, that we can read. This morning that this word is from God, because John 1 verse 1 says to us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And who was in the beginning? God created heaven and earth, and the word of God was with him. So whatever we read from this Bible is from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we can take it because this is the truth that is we've got in our hands. While I was reading this story about the ten talents, and that is an old, uh, old story. Everyone heard it about a hundred times before, but it spoke to me. And while I was reading it, I can remember about the story I've read it's this uh, CEO of this huge company that's a million dollar company. And the CEO decided, or he came at that age that he's prepared to go on retirement now. And the people, uh, normally the CEO will go to his kids and see if they don't want to take over the business from him. But the CEO decided to do it differently this time. He had all his accountants working for him and he called them all together in the boardroom. And he spoke to them, and he explained to them, listen, I'm almost to retirement. One of you is going to relieve me or take over from me. So the Oaks that worked for him were very uh, disappointed because he was a good boss. They enjoyed working for him. He was a righteous man. And so he explained further to them that he's going to give everyone a seed that they need to grow, and they look, look, must look after the seed because he's entrusting them with it. So Kali... That's me now, stand there, but it wasn't really me, just for the story. Also received a seat, and his wife betrays at home. So Kali went, ran home, explained to his wife precisely what the boss said that he's going to do and who's going to take over. So Kali and Patrais went to, the, to the, the garden where they sell garden stuff, and they buy a, a, a pot, a uh, pot potting soil and whatever they need to let this seed grow and so the two of them they plant the seed in a pot and they look after it very nicely after three weeks this Kali went to work and all the other oaks that was there that had the same job than he had to do they all spoke about the seed starting to grow and it's looking beautiful after six months when he came back they tell him how beautiful flowers they've got trees they've got and he still got nothing because his seed don't grow at all. So he said to his wife, now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the place where they sell the flowers. He's going to buy a flower. Then when he gets there, at least he's got something to show. So his wife told him, no, mm -mm, leave it there. Talk the truth. And no proof and nothing but the truth. So he decides, no, he's going to do it that way. So when the CEO came back from a long trip, his holiday, he came back, he called all the uh, Odotera together, and uh, he want to see what's happening with the seed, because he must see which one is the best, so he can decide that person can take over from him and be the new CEO. So when all the everyone was standing in the boardroom, the CEO scanned through the place and see who's there and who isn't there, and he saw Kali. Hmm. His pot is empty. He said, come here bring that empty pot with it and come stand here next to me. So Kali stood up, he took his pot and he walked to the front 
then he decided by himself, oh well, I'm jobless, I'm going to be fired, there's no hope, nothing. So he stood next to the CEO and the CEO asked him, Kali, what happened? And Kali said, hey, you didn't want to grow. So the CEO greeted him and said, welcome, you are taking over from me, you are the new CEO of this company. So Kali was surprised, what's happening now? So the owner said, Kali is the only one that had the courage and that he could have trusted to bring the correct seat back to the company. Because all the, other, all the seeds were boiled seed. It couldn't grow. So they weren't supposed to grow any plants. So Kali was the only one that was faithful to what the owner of that company asked him to do. So we need to be faithful in what the Lord asked us to do. Because the Lord is trusting us with what he gave us. That's why it's so important that we need to go out and use what we've got to use. Because we can't wait one day until maybe the Lord comes just before he comes. I can quickly use my talents. No, we must use it immediately. Some of the translations in the Bible says that they went out immediately and traded with the talents. So that's why we need to go out immediately and trade with what the Lord gives us. Because Matthew 25 verse 13 tells us, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So here we can see that we don't know when the Lord is coming. But if we read Matthew 24 and 25, we read there that the disciples is asking the Lord, Lord, when is this going to happen? And there the Lord tells his disciples about the signs that will be there before he comes. Because no one knows when Jesus is coming except the Father. So we need to go out and use it as soon as we receive the talents. So what we need to realize now what the word of the Lord tells us. Jesus is coming back. There's nothing we can do about it. He promised in the word, he's coming back. And John 14 verse 3 tells us, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that we, where I am, there you may also be. So, Jesus is on his way back. There's nothing we can do about it. So that's why it's important to know that everyone has received a talent. All the servants of that owner in the Matthew 25, all of them received a talent. The one received five, the other one two, and the other one one. But all of them did receive a talent. Like us, children of God, a member of the church, all of us also did receive a talent that we need to use. So I want to have a look at the word talent. That word talent in our text verse talks about money. So Kenan has put us a picture on about money that they used in that time. Um, yeah, this, that, that's the tax money, money changes, charges, Peter's in the fish and Judas that betray the Lord for 50 silver pieces. So that's the money that I've uh, received or that I took down. So one talent represents 6,000 denarius. Now in Afrikaans, a denarius they call a penning. So, and one denarius was a normal day wages for a laborer. And that's about 35 years of salary for a day wager. Because Matthew 22, he tells there that the owner of the vineyard agree with the workers for one penning or one denarius a day. That was the salary for a for for a, a laborer, a one day laborer. So what interesting is King Solomon received six hundred and sixty six talents a year. That was his salary. And what Pastor Duke said this morning, that is the number of the devil is six hundred and sixty six. 
So what that means, what I'm thinking now is money is from the devil in any case. So let's just <laughs> leave it there. So, okay, sorry. No, not really. God is giving us money because he trusts us with it. And he trusts us to use it for his kingdom. That was just a joke now. Okay. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. That is five weeks wages for a laborer that's got a six day working. That must work for six days. So what I was thinking is if talents is so much money, what will we do if someone entrusts us with so much money? A lot of times, I think everyone is doing it, but especially me, is when I must win a lot of money. But I don't really want to use the word win. When I inherit, is most that word, ne? Yeah. When I inherit a lot of money, what will I do with it? Then <laughs> I daydream about the island and a car and I won't work anymore and I will enjoy my life with my wife and all that stuff. I think all of us had that dreams. Because we will never win the lotto because we don't play the lotto. But I mean, that is if, if, if we do it. And then there's one thing that is always an indication of my faith is the way I use my money. If I use money for home improvements and beauty treatments, not for me, for my wife, and to have the latest electronic stuff that's on the market, before I give to the Lord, what does it say about my love for the Lord? We mustn't prepare stuff on earth where Matthew 6, 19 and 21 tells us is do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth when moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, whether neither moth nor rust destroy, and with thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart. So that's a warning to tell us that we must use our talents, and one of that talents is the money the Lord gave us, that we must use for His kingdom, and not for ourselves. And if we are I just look for the word obedient. If we are obedient to what the Lord tells us, then Malachi three ten tells us, bring all the tidings into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try let's test me in this, says the Lord of the host. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will be room, not enough room to receive it. So if we are obedient, the promise the Lord gives us there is that we can beprove him. That's Afrikaans word for testing, for opening the window of heaven for us. And what a privilege it is for us to be children of God because the promise is there for us so that the windows can be opened, so that we can be healthy, that we can have a building, that we can have an echo and each other to praise and worship the Lord. What more do we want than that blessings of the Lord? And in that blessings is hope for us that we can praise the Lord. So I was thinking, again, I was thinking two times already. My wife said I mustn't keep on saying everything over and over. So, But the second time I was thinking, if a talent is worth so much money, then that Lord of the servants had to love the first one more than he loved the second one and the third one because he gave five talents to the first one, two to the second one, and one to the last one. But that is not what it was about. It went about he gave them according to their ability to know what to do with it. That's the same as the Lord gave us talents. He gave us according to what we can handle, can we use handles also, that we can handle because he knows us. He can't give us something that we cannot bear. Why I say he won't give us something that we cannot bear is in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 tells us, 
No temptation has overtaken you except such as it's common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? But with temptation will also make a way for escape that you may be alert to bear it. So we do not need to be afraid in what the Lord gave us to, to do. And if anything comes in our way, like that phone call, we mustn't be afraid and look around because God is giving us an escape way to bear the things. He will not tempt you more than what you can handle. The talents that we receive, God gives to us because He can trust us. The Lord said it's better for us if he goes to his father to prepare place for, him, for us because he gave us the Holy Spirit and he gave us the instruction what to do while he's gone to prepare a place for us and that is a scripture that all of us is supposed to know it of heart now it's Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 go out therefore make disciples of all nations baptize them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to be uh, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lol, lol. Tony Perry, what is and lol? Lol. I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. So God has given everyone instruction here to do while he's away. Like the servants each receive the talent that they are need to use it. Because I was looking at the definition of the word talent. It says, the thing the Lord gives you now, he's going to ask for you later. So what are we going to do if the Lord comes? And we know that the Lord is coming back because we've read it. And if we stand in front of him and he's going to ask us, what did you do with the talents I gave you? Everyone received different talents, making music, be a home cell leader, making coffee, opening the church, cleaning the pulpits. Everything is what the Lord gives us to do, that we need to do it. So he can come back and ask us, what did you do with what I gave you? So what I want to do now, I want to give us a small demonstration of talents. I think. Yeah. In the African service this morning, the first service. No, I'll explain later. I'm not going to give it away now. Okay. This is my life. You see, I can see through it. There's nothing hidden. So, first water reading. Yeah. First throw the Holy Spirit. Water. Baptize. <laughs> Thank you, my name Star of Mary. Buy a Star of that's better we receive the spirit slowly so we know it's permanent and not just temporarily okay that is so nice okay perfect now what are we going to do we're going to throw in one talent in this bowl that's one and we go in, gonna put three talents in that bowl. Two, three. So if we have a look at this now, the amount of talents that's inside here, which one is gonna make the most foam? Do all agree that the three is gonna make the most foam? Anyone not? Okay, Judy, shake it. 
Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. So what we see here this morning is that the one with the one talent is making the most foam. Have a look at it. You see there's more foam in here than that side. Do all of you agree with me? Yeah. So the point that I want to make here with this demonstration, it's not the amount of talents we've got that's making the earth to move. It's the way we use the talents in this bowl. So it doesn't matter. Thank you, Rudy. So it doesn't matter what talent you've got. The way we use it, that is the way we need to have it. Okay, so. So we, when we read that, we read that the, the first two oaks was using the talents that they received immediately. But if we look at the last servant, he didn't reuse the talent that he received from the Lord. So there can be a few questions and ask, why didn't he use it? Didn't he understand what he received from the Lord? Didn't he precisely know what he received from the Lord? Or didn't he know how to use it or what to do with it? Because in my life, in the beginning, when I received my talents, I didn't even know what was my talents that I've received. I didn't know what to do with what I had or how to do it with what I had. So this loss oak can have the same problem. He didn't know what to do with it. But now, when we read further, it says there that this oak that didn't use his talents, he made a different picture of the owner that gave him the talents. He said to that man, you s gathered where you don't sow? No. Let me just read it here. Then who has received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be the hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So this Oksoma blames the, his Lord why he didn't use his talent. Because he say all these things about that person. But he was not that. He was a good and a gentle man like the Lord. So in my life, I must be very careful not to give other people a blame, not to use my talents or use what the Lord gave me. I must take responsibility and use what the Lord gave me. This oak, I'm sure if he repented before the Lord and he said, sorry, that I didn't use what you gave me to use, that oak would have forgiven him. Instead, he said to him, your lazy servant, go away from me because he didn't use what the Lord gave him to use. But to the other two that used what the Lord gave them, he said, good, faithful, and good servant. Over a few, you were, uh, yeah, and I will make much more. So if we use the talents like that, doesn't matter how much we've got, but the more we use it, the more we will receive. So that we can stand before the Lord when he returns, and the Lord can tell us, your good and faithful servant. Because that's what we're here for, is to do the will of our Lord Jesus. So the Lord said to the, the, the others, take away the talent from him and give it to the one with the te ten talents. So then he kicked him out into the darkness. So if we don't use what the Lord gives us to use, a similar thing is going to happen, especially in my life. Like that phone call I had, on that moment, I said, Lord, did I really do what I was supposed to do? Are you going to kick me out? Are you going to show me a way? Or is there still space in my life to do what I was supposed to do? So we need to use what the Lord gave us. So with my ending, uh, the word talent has got a bigger meaning first one, when the Lord gave us money and he gave all of us some of it, he trusts us with the money for his kingdom. That's what he gave us money for. The second thing is, when God gives us a talent of doing good in music, athletics, or s physically doing something very good, we must give God thanks to that that he gave us. And the third and the last thing is, 
when God gives us a spiritual gift, and He has gave everyone at least one, we need to use it to expand His kingdom. So, I want to plead for you this morning. Don't be afraid in what the Lord has given you. If He lays on your heart to do that to that person, to bring money to the church, to greet the people at the door, we need to do what we need to do. Pastor Dupi always say, the pastor's work is your work and your work is the pastor's work. It's not everything for him. We are all one body in Christ. And if one finger doesn't work in the body, the whole body suffers. So we need to step up, take the responsibility, and do what the Lord tells us to do. And that is what the Lord e expects from each and every one of us this morning. So I want to I want to do, uh, do a prayer for us now. Uh, someone uh, did do this prayer. I just wrote it down because I think it's a good thing to pray this so that no negative word that someone say, oh, you're now a Christian. How can you be a Christian? Look what you've done or anything happening in your family or your relationship or anything that has been broken down because that's not from the Lord. So if we can close our eyes and open our hearts because it's a Holy Spirit thing in our hearts that the Lord can speak to us now. I want to uh, just wait for Marley to play. Thanks, Marley. Um, we can prepare our hearts so long. I declare that all negative words that are spoken over you are break down and destroy. Negative words spoken over your children, negative words, words spoken over your relationship, over your finances, over your ministries, over your health. In fact, every negative word spoken over your life is now destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 54 verse 17 that all words that is spread against you will not stand forth. And that includes words as well. I know that the past was hard and was made a lot of mistakes, but God does not hold us responsible. It's people that is holding us responsible. God has already forgiven you for your past. So if there's not anyone that can speak positively over your life and over yourself, you've got the power to look in the mirror and speak positively over your own situations. You can speak life over your children. You can speak life over your health, over your relationship, over your ministries, over your finances. You need to learn to speak positively to yourself building yourself up because we are more than conquerors through Christ that's giving us the power. I want to remind you one last time. This is the last time that we live in fear. Anything in our lives I declare to be broken off or broken down and to be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to make this word your own because we are more than conquerors through Christ has given us the power. In Jesus' name, amen.